All right, well, Brad, it's 12.01, shall we? Let's go ahead and get started, Sarah. All right, I'm gonna share my screen and we've got... We've got a pretty typical looking slide right here for the opening of our webinars. I'm Sarah Hanewald. I'm the senior director at here at One Schoolhouse. And today's guest, who is sometimes also the host, is Brad Rathgever, head of school here at One Schoolhouse. So Brad, do you want to say hi? Hey, everybody. It is, uh, it's great to have you join us today, especially in a day when we have some news for you. So we're super excited to jump in. We are. So as we always do, we had a pulse this week and we asked you, what do you enjoy most about being an academic leader? And your answers are inspirational as always and insightful, lots to think about. I'm just gonna put these up here for a minute and share a couple because as we were reading these, we said, we've got to do more with these than just open our webinar. So look for more to come. So these are a few that we picked, but the one that really spoke to me was helping others meet and exceed their potential. And I think mm -hmm. that speaks to the soul of many an academic leader. So Brad, you wanna take it from here? I'll drive. Sure, I'm happy to. So folks, we're super excited today because we have some news for you. Um, in case you haven't heard yet, uh, One Schoolhouse is super excited to launch the Association for Academic Leaders uh, powered by One Schoolhouse. Um, we know that during the course of the COVID pandemic, academic leaders have been asked to step up their game, so to speak, strategically um, for their schools. And at the same time, uh, our work in equity and belonging really intensified. Um, there was a digital transformation that was already in place that accelerated and intensified as well. A lot of the things that we were working on pre-pandemic were really truly accelerated over the course of the COVID pandemic. Um, and that changed the role of academic leaders and in independent schools. It also quite frankly changed the role that we at One Schoolhouse have been able to play for academic leaders as well. We, throughout the course of the pandemic, have tried to step up to meet the needs of academic leaders, and our work has evolved. Um, a few years ago, we didn't have a regular Wednesday webinar series. We weren't hosting meetups for folks. We didn't have an active listserv. Now we have these meetups, these listservs, these webinars, online courses, blog posts every week talking about best practices, et cetera. We've really, as an organization, evolved, and as we step back, realized we have an association for academic leaders at one schoolhouse. We just had names as such. So we're excited to name it as such and to be able to then grow out even more resources for academic leaders over the next number of years. So we're launching this association. And I think you can almost say there are three big reasons why. Um, we think that academic leaders really deserve a professional organization devoted to their needs that academic leaders have increasingly complex jobs with an expanded set of responsibilities, and that academic leaders are cultivating a far-reaching range of skills and expertise. We also think that academic leaders should be championed to reflect the essential skills and insights that they have. We know that academic leaders are pivoting regularly between the urgent and the important, the strategy and the tactics. Um, sometimes we all do this minute by minute. Uh, and for One Schoolhouse, we also know that, that you all have become the folks who are ensuring mission integrity and are delivering the program every day, day in and day out. Schools rely on academic leaders to make sure that the program, what gets delivered in the classroom, really aligns to the school's mission and values. We also know that over the last number of years, the role of the head of school has changed, which has then forced evolution on the academic leaders. Heads are now really like CEOs of multi-million dollar organizations. Uh, and at the same time that that transition happens, it's meant that academic leaders have had to step into more of a chief academic officer type position. 
um, and are re really taking control of the academic integrity of the institution in a way that used to sort of be more of the purview of the head of school. So our roles as academic leaders within organizations have had to change and school heads really need us to be authentic uh, partners, thought partners, in order to reach the mission of their school. So um, one other characteristic of academic leaders is that academic leaders really like to do their homework. Uh, as, as a group, we, we kind of like to make sure that we get things right. Um, and so we like to do our homework and we're used to doing our homework. So it won't surprise you to know that as we started to look at how we might be able to serve the community of academic leaders, we did our homework too. Um, we did a lot of research into a diverse array of fields, trying to understand what was going on in higher education, business practice, medicine. Um, we did interviews and surveying. Um, we surveyed more than 4,800 academic leaders in independent schools to understand what the needs were. And we did in-depth interviews and had a hired, in fact, hired an outside research firm to do independent interviews with academic leaders across schools. We then did a lot of reviews of competencies as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes and developed out a series of focus groups, which looking at the participants in today's webinar, I know many of you are part of some of those focus groups as we honed in on what the competencies and skills needed of academic leaders were. And we learned other things about this group of academic leaders too. Chief among them was something that came a little bit as a surprise to us uh, at the beginning, but but stepping back really doesn't surprise us that much at all. We found out that academic leaders uh, really love the work that they're doing and are not necessarily looking to do something else either. So 50% of academic leaders are really looking to maintain their current position in their current school or a similar position at another school. Another 14% are looking to really retire in the role that they're in. So 64%, a, a good strong majority of academic leaders are not looking for the next job. They're in fact looking to just continue to get better at uh, the job that they hold uh, until, until retirement. Another 24% are looking to, uh, to move up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're looking to move up to a head of school position or something of that type either. What's super interesting is that a lot of the training that's geared towards academic leaders currently is geared towards helping them progress to be heads of school. And while that pipeline is super important, it doesn't necessarily recognize and value what the, what the needs and, uh, and desires of academic leaders themselves are. So we think that there's a space in here where we can help folks continue to grow in the work and jobs that they love to do. Another thing that we found interesting in our research is that 75% of respondents told us that there wasn't one organization that meets their needs. We are blessed in the independent school industry to have a tremendous amount of support and resources around us. Um, we have a fantastic national association in NIS. We have great state and regional organizations that help and support the work that we do. Um, we also know that there are specialized groups that help with different roles within, uh, within the independent school ecosphere. So NBOA serves a particular role for business officers, uh, uh, as do so many other organizations, Atlas for technology officers, et cetera. There's not one association though that has focused in on the real specific needs of academic leaders in independent schools. And so again, we're excited to be able to help step up in this way um, because quite frankly, academic leaders need and deserve it. They deserve a community, professional community that champions the work that they do and focuses in on the skills and competencies that they need in order to find success. So who are academic leaders? It's a pretty wide range of titles. You know, folks can hold a pretty wide range of titles. Um, and these are just but a few of them. And they sort of depend in some ways on, uh, on how a school is structured. So let's go on to the next slide too. We also know, as I, as I mentioned a number of times, that uh, academic leaders have a specific set of skills and competencies that they're looking to cultivate. So I noted that we did a lot of research, surveying and interviewing 
And then we started to develop some focus groups over the course of the summer and fall to really hone in on what those competencies are that academic leaders need. Uh, at One Schoolhouse, we've had a lot of experience with competency-based learning for a while, in part because uh, we've focused our student program on competency-based instruction dating back to 2015. So we're able to bring some of our skill sets that we've had on the student side of the program into this now professional learning realm. As you all know, a competency is composed of a collection of skills and a related knowledge base. A competency can be observed as measurable, and a competency can transfer to a new situation. So we've worked with academic leaders to really craft this set of competencies that speak to their particular, um, to, to their particular um, needs and, and, and work. So Sarah, I think I'm turning it over to you this, oh, actually, before I even turn it over to you, don't I get to tell folks about some of the yes. folks that have joined us as well? You ready? Yeah. So uh, in just the last 27 hours since we launched this association, we found that folks, it's really resonated with folks. Um, and we've had, uh, as of, I think, 1142 or something like that this morning, 20 schools already join uh, in our efforts uh, for this new association. So we're excited that this has been really resonating um, with folks in the independent school community in a very short period of time. So Sarah, I'm going to toss it over to you now for some details. Absolutely. And thank you, Brad. I'm, I'm honored to be presenting this to the community. And if, um, if you haven't read my blog post, one of the things that I said in my blog post is, you know, this is the association that when I was a newly minted academic dean and had some questions, I wish that this had been a place for me to turn. So I'm grateful um, to have the opportunity to put this together. And I hope that it meets that need. And Sienna is fabulous. She's dropping the blog post in. So I also just wanna share that we will take a few minutes here at the end for questions for sure. So please put those in the Q&A as they occur to you. Um, if it's something that I know I'm going to be getting to, I'll probably wait until we get to that part, but I, I do wanna make sure I have some time for answering questions. So we're gonna break this down a little bit more in the upcoming slides, but here's the summary form. In this professional community, Academic leaders are gonna have the connections they need to grow. Brad mentioned earlier that academic leaders told us that they thrive when they can connect with peers who are doing similar work. And that's true, even though they feel a little bit only in their roles at school. So those informal networks have been really valuable to academic leaders for, for many years. And we're providing just a little scaffolding and structure to make sure that that network is supported and that folks aren't having to do that entirely on their own to build that peer network. And then when we learned that individuals loved the jobs that they had, but wanted to grow in them, we knew that we needed to provide just an abundance of targeted professional learning that focused on competencies, adding skills to expand a competency. If you've ever heard me talk about it, you know that I um, talk about transfer a lot and adaptive expertise and the idea that as you grow, you, you can thrive in new and novel situations that you haven't seen before. So put all that together and that's how school impact, right? Individuals grow, they're connected to one another and then teaching and learning across the school is affected in a positive way. And that helps all of us deliver on their missions of their schools. So I'm break this down a little bit more, but first I'm gonna go straight into um, what I see some people are wondering. So as we go into our launch, we launch officially July 1st. And prior to then, we're offering a sneak preview and that's for our consortium schools or for anyone who joins um, and commits now, we will go ahead and offer that sneak preview there as well. And that includes a preview of our online courses, webinars, our in-person professional learning, and there's more about that later. We're super excited to be bringing that. Members only meetups, newsletter, curated research information, and um, just a, a lot to, get to give to you an idea of where we're headed. And then when we launch on July 1st, we will have our online community, additional courses will be available, and we'll have our multimedia resource library built. And I've got the fees there and then Sienna can probably drop the link to the, the full page that has the information and the joining form in the chat. 
So let's talk about our online courses. So the courses that we are building as part of this association are, they're, they're what you know and love. They're what we do best. They're asynchronous, but paced with a facilitator, an opportunity to connect to others and to help you build out your skills. And we're really targeting academic leaders at multiple stages in their career. Sometimes you're just starting your first year and you wanna build that plan. How do I make this first year have impact? Um, sometimes you may be really seasoned and yet there's an area where you're considering how do I support teachers after these difficult challenges? How can I be a more empathetic leader? Um, one of the things that we've heard quite often from folks is that department chair, that beginning of leadership for some people is a very pivotal and transitional time and it's critical to a school's ability to deliver on their mission. So that's a group that we're spending a lot of time thinking about. We're also thinking about what happens when academic leaders are called upon to lead something where they may not have personal expertise and how do you, how do you build those skills as an academic leader? So really excited and also honored to uh, be responsive. That's part of an association too, is to be responsive to you when you tell us here's an area where we'd like to grow. With this association, we'll be able to offer some ongoing community that supports the participants in these classes as well. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. All right, so let's talk about this in-person gathering. So Brad, you're right where we're gonna be. <laughs> I am. Right, just a few stories above Brad right now in the WeWork building in Washington, DC. We are planning a gathering June 16th and 17th of academic leaders. And this is really a time to, to really reconnect, say, how are you? How is everybody? Rebuild your network, people you may not have seen in person for a long time, or people who maybe you never saw in person and you have Zoomed with, and you're eager to get the chance to connect in person. We know it's not going to get easy. It's not, there's not a, phew, we're, we're ready. There's a lot that academic leaders need to do to take care of themselves so that they can take care of their schools and their communities. So we're gonna have some hands-on collaborative opportunities and some inspirational speakers who will help us as academic leaders get ready for the next year. One uh, registration for this in-person event is included for every school that joins the association. So um, know that you can mark your calendars now. And then that is a long weekend in DC that is going to be um, just looking at the celebrations that are planned for Juneteenth. So you may wanna mark your calendar and stay for the long weekend. There's gonna be a lot of opportunity to celebrate them. So online community, I've referred to this a couple of times. What we are building is an extension of what we've already offered, but in an area where It'll be exclusive to members. There's an opportunity to be in a safe place with other people who do what you do and be able to collaborate and connect. We'll have curated resources and conversations around those resources. This is also a place where, hey, I took this class and I wanna stay connected to some of the other people who took the class with me and we can make that happen within the community in a way that will offer you the opportunity to continue to grow and maybe plan the next class. So we're excited to launch this online community. I'm watching my time. All right, so let us answer your questions. And Brad, I've already got a question about the online community here in the chat. And so I'm just going to say yes, that that is a members only community, but it's open to any individual at a member school. So it's not a per person membership fee. Once your school belongs, everybody at your school has access to the resources. So that was a great question. Thank you. Great, and Sarah, we've gotten two in the Q&A and I'd encourage folks to put any questions that you have into the Q&A. Um, the first one is from Nick and I've answered it online already, but just to be clear for everybody, for the fee structure, does it cover one individual from a school or the entire academic team? It covers the entire academic team. Um, we want to make sure that the resources being developed by this association really can serve the entire school, um, the entire school's academic leadership team. And so it covers the entire team. 
And then uh, also have a question about sharing the slides. Yep, they will be up online uh, uh, as part of our webinars on our YouTube channel, which is also linked from our webinars link on our website. Great, thank you. And do we want to just give everybody room to answer, to ask any more questions? I can wax on. <laughs> I can talk some more about our online event. We Let's see. Okay, so follow up question about entire academic team. Are we limiting it by title? And the answer to that is no. You at your school define academic leadership and that is who is welcome to join the community and access the resources. Great question and thank you for clarifying that. And so and we have I another question about more information on the DC event. And so um, let's talk about maybe how we model this and, and, and really get to that feel that you're trying to get to too, right? We, we know that um, academic leaders do a lot of their best work when they're in community with each other. And so I, I would say in terms of how we're structuring that live event, it's going to focus more as much as possible on connection with each other, connection with colleagues. We know that as Sarah said, sometimes academic leaders can feel like uh, an island of one within their schools. I'm the only math department chair. I'm the only academic dean at my school. And so to have time and space to connect with peers um, across the industry, um, especially coming off of the last couple of years and what we have, um, what we have gone all gone through collectively is is focus number one of the of that gathering. Wouldn't you say, Sarah? I think that's absolutely right, Brad. And um, I got pinged from someone as well who said, you know, every other group is meeting this spring. They're having some kind of opportunity to gather in person. Thank you. So I, th I think that's true as well. You know, that opportunity. I know that academic leaders would have a really hard time getting away while the school year is still in swing. So June seems like just the right time to us. Although Brad, can you work on the humidity? in DC and make sure that it doesn't hit too hard and heavy by June. I, I can't do anything on that, but I can promise you that knowing that we're heading into a long weekend of the Juneteenth celebration here in DC, it's going to be a great weekend to be in Washington. And so we hope that we hope that a number of folks use it as a, as a good excuse to get down to DC and, and join us in, in town for celebrations. Um, we also have a question around, uh, can folks bring a team to that event? Um, Sarah, do you want to talk about that for a second? Because there's, I think, some pros and cons to that, right? There are. And so there, there are a couple of things going on there. One is that we want to be able to have, um, you know, a right-sized event where it feels like we're in community and together. And so if a large team were to come from one school, I'm not sure that that would... Um, would incorporate the same thing. At the same time, we understand that a school might wanna send two or three people. So we do have that option to send more than one person. That's, that'll be um, on the registration form for that, for additional registrations. And then the other thing that I should add, Brad, is we're taking advantage of the location and we're really focusing too on helping academic leaders consider and collaborate. How do you navigate as a leader to really help us help everybody focus on the well-being of the children in your care when the outside world seems fraught. And so that's one of the things that we're going to do. Um, we got another question. It says, is this group framed strictly around supporting instruction? Would questions about hiring be appropriate in this space? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. In fact, Brad, that's a course you've taught before. Do you wanna talk a little bit about that? <laughs> it absolutely is. Um, Actually, I'm going to stop the screen sharing so we can. Yeah, let's do that, on. Sarah. Um, it, it absolutely is. You know, academic leaders have a, a lot of different responsibilities in their buildings beyond curriculum and instruction, including hiring um, and building a team and uh, and helping those on your team continue to grow uh, in their work. And so all of that is is absolutely a focus of the association um, and will be as we go forward. Um, Sir, we have a couple more questions yes. in here. You know, will there be some delineation for leaders from different schools size to meet? Uh, over time, absolutely. 
Um, and we know that one of the benefits of the online classes that we have is that uh, it can often cause folks to start to um, recognize peers that they didn't know that they had across the country before they went into those classes. Um, so uh, Dawn, I, I'm not sure that we're gonna have delineation within the first, um, uh, within the first in-person gathering that we have, other than uh, there'll be some opportunities for folks from small schools to get together and talk during those, just as there are within online classes uh, as well. That's great. And then we had another question about uh, what if no one from our school can make the DC session in June? And Brad, you and I are um, committed to making sure that all the resources will be available that we can we can make available. And then um, we're hoping this isn't it. Yeah, this will not be the only time that we. I, I, I think sometimes in 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 professional learning spaces we over focus on the in person. Um, we're not going to overfocus, I will tell you as an association, on just the in-person. That's valuable. It's an important way to connect, but there are plenty of additional ways that we know we can connect that we all have over the last couple of years, too. This is where uh, opportunities for meetups, for example, will continue to play a prominent role. The online courses, the member community, as Sarah's talked about, as we're building. And, you know, Brad, I was at a one schoolhouse um, than online school for girls school before I ever joined the team. And if there's anything one schoolhouse does really well, it's blended. So this is a professional organization with just stellar online and in-person experiences available. We probably have time for one more question. And let's see, we've got a question about the fees again, does that include everyone at the school? And the answer to that is yes. It includes everybody your school leadership designates as an academic leader, as a member and with access to the resources. And again, we know that that looks different at different schools. And so we leave that up to you to define that. But thank you all so much for attending today. This has been great. Um, as always, if you have follow-up questions, don't hesitate to shoot either Sarah or me an email. Um, we're happy to meet and talk and um, uh, and continue to work with you all. And Sienna, would you drop a link to my calendar in the chat? I've got a Calendly set up just for meetings for folks who want to talk about this. So click on that before you head out. Great. Thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.